So today we're talking about bushcrafting knives yet again. It's probably one of my favorite subjects to talk about. That's because of the amount of variants, the amount of different options there are out there on the market. And today we're going to be talking about how small is too small for bushcrafting knives. And what I mean by this is that there certainly are a lot of different options for small knives in bushcrafting. And I've talked quite at length about my love for the little Mora Eldress and when I talk about how small is too small I mean to talk about for a primary bushcrafting knife what is about the smallest or really the optimal size for the knife to choose what do you want to choose or what is the you know what's about the smallest size you want to choose so first let's talk about why small knives are important for bushcrafting and so before we talk about what really is the perfect size for a bushcrafting knife, let's talk about why small knives are a good idea for bushcrafting. Now, for those who are uninitiated or maybe unfamiliar, bushcrafting really is the practice of wilderness self-reliance with multiple tools. It's a tool set, and I have done a video about my tool set a few months ago where I broke down, you know, showing that I have a saw, an axe, a hatchet, a knife, and a pocket knife or something that goes in the pocket that's reasonably small for carving and so that's the optimal tool set for bushcrafting and in that set it's inherently a heavier tool set because you have more tools and it's a more capable tool set because you have a variance of tools that are capable or specialized at doing different tasks and so when you factor those two points in you want to have you want to have a knife that is portable and easy to carry something that's not going to weigh you down and oftentimes something that ends up becoming a neck knife and as you can see all three of these blades are neck knives so you can see that there is quite a bit of difference between the smallest and the largest of these neck knives and ultimately when it comes down to a good bush crafting blade that is lighter weight something that you so when it comes down to a good bush crafting knife you want something that is lighter weight but still is completely mission capable of doing what you want and in most bush crafting situations and tasks that you're going to be putting your knife into they're going to be things such as camp tasks like starting fires so striking ferro rods it's going to be processing game animals you're going to be you know batoning wood if it's just a little bit too big for, or a little bit too small for your axe or maybe hatchet to break down and split and so when you factor all of the different tasks that your knife is commonly going to be facing the general size that I recommend and that I found the most useful is just under four inches. And when I mean just under, I sometimes really mean just under. This bushcrafter here has a blade length of 3.9 inches and the Legome 3.8. And those are two of my favorite bushcrafting knives to use. In fact, when I come to teach bushcrafting to people, I often have either the bushcrafter or the Legome. And so that blade length of just under four inches I found to be really the sweet spot because it allows you to have a good amount of dexterity and flexibility with your blade. It allows you to not have too much edge or too much weight or really a cumbersome knife but it allows you to have still something that is capable to be put into many different situations. Most of the wood you're going to be bush or most of the wood you're going to be batoning over or most of the wood you're going to be batoning over splitting with an axe is going to be about that three inch, you know, wood that's just a little bit more than you want to throw on a fledgling fire, but still not quite a thick log. So this blade length ends up being just about perfect for bushcrafting knives. And once again, having a smaller blade like this allows you to do a lot of fine craft skills because when it comes to building things like shelters, you know, in terms of a survival situation, you might be using a knife like the Pacific to build that shelter. But in terms of bushcrafting, when you're building a shelter or a larger um, craft, such as an elevated kitchen or maybe a tripod, you know, you're going to be using um, 
you're going to be using hatchets, you're going to be using axes to do a lot of the work there. You might do some notch work with a knife, but by and large, you know, you're going to be dropping the trees. You're going to be notching large trees with an axe or a hatchet. You're not going to be using, you know, this knife for limbing. You're not going to be using the knife for many of those tasks. So it becomes irrelevant or unimportant to have something that's much larger than four inches in blade length because it's just unnecessary. And once again, you don't want something too small like the Essie Azula or the Mora Eldris because while they are still good knives in their own right, these, as far as a main bushcrafting blade goes, are just ending up to be just a little bit too small to do meaningful tasks around camp. You know, these are blades that can definitely strike a ferro rod and start, start a fire, but trying to baton anything of significant value with a more Eldris is just laughable. So, anyways, this is a fun little video that I thought I'd do to, you know, kind of help with, uh, bushcrafting knives and help with your selection of a bushcrafting knife and ultimately if you're considering you know having a custom bushcrafting knife made these are some factors that definitely go into play with that so as always guys hope you found this interesting and god bless and i'm out